Yes. Uh, I, I, thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, as you know, today was a day set aside for public participation on the impeachment of the deputy president. Uh, I think a lot of time and uh, money has been spent on what we think was totally unnecessary. When you look at what this country is going through, parents are unable to take their children to college, families are unable to put food on the table, we have challenges in hospitals where people are being told to give cash before they are treated, including patients who are undergoing dialysis, and they have been turned away. The country is in a serious crisis. And these are matters that should be taking our focus and our attention as a nation, not a public participation exercise over some power play in the ruling coalition. It is a sad day for Kenya. But what is even sadder is uh, the violence that has accompanied uh, uh, this process. And this violence has been seen across the country. We've seen it in Kiambu, where our clan uh, governor Waititu was. And uh, uh, we, up to now, we do not know what happened to him. But we do know there was violence there. And not just in Kiambu, in Nyeri, the entire Mount Kenya, and other parts of the country. But what really has gotten the attention of the nation is the violence at Bomas, where our client uh, Morara was seen uh, being attacked from all corners. We saw uh, seats, and we are talking of metallic seats being thrown at him. And he was hit. In fact, we saw uh, him uh, getting uh, attacked on live television. And we want to thank Citizen and the other uh, media houses that covered it. Uh, we do know that uh, he's not well, and that is why he has not come to court. We want to thank the court for the indulgence they have extended to us as uh, his legal team to note that indeed, uh, because of the violence, our client has been injured and is undergoing treatment at the Nairobi uh, hospital as we speak. We must condemn this ugly uh, head of uh, uh, violence that is being reared in our country. And uh, we have seen this in post-election violence, in terms of pre-election violence, and uh, we blame this totally on the president and uh, his ruling coalition that has subjected the country to an unnecessary process that was not really a priority. There are many priorities that many Kenyans are looking at. Removing Regadi Gashagwa is not a priority for ordinary Kenyans who are suffering. And we should not have subjected the country to this. Wastage of time, wastage of resources. When we have no money to give to our counties, five months, counties have not been paid. We have no money to pay our teachers. We have no money to pay our interns. And here we are splashing and wasting money on an unnecessary process of public participation that will not help the country. It is a sad day for this country. Thank you. Um, William Ruto has no capacity to start before Kenyans and address the Kenyans on the issues that are of concern to them. Just like my colleague has mentioned, we have a corrupting education system we have a corrupting health system. We have scandals all over. Uh, perhaps they may have used the day to hand over our airport to Adani. We have scandals now in the judiciary. And there was no reason as to why we should have continued with this process of impeachment if it is not a diversionary tactic that is being used by William Ruto. Unfortunately, again and again, uh, we have seen the level of violence across the country and called for including attacking a young man in the name of Morala just because he showed up at the bombers. And what we are now witnessing is really a crowback of all the gains that we had during our 2010 constitutional movement.
We saw this during the 2007 difficulties that we had in the country. It started this way, slowly, violence before elections, that ended up with post-election violence, where we lost over 1,300 people. William Ruto has set this country again on the long path. He is setting up one community against another. And if you ask me, he is really keen on lynching the Mount Kenya community. The 41 against one is back on the table. It's a desire that he had before he learned for elections. He is now actualizing it. And for the avoidance of doubt, in the event that that seat becomes vacant, I hold the view that it, we don't need it in Mount Kenya. He should not use it to cause that animosity between communities. Let him take it elsewhere. And finally, for individuals like Idiki, they must also see the whole plan. Once they are done with Riji, it will be him. And even those who come from other regions, once he's done with them, for purposes of personal preservation, come 2027, he'll occasion this to any other person who looks like uh, he can start on his way. It's unfortunate that we have lost parliament and we have no other institution that we can learn to when these matters uh, are before us. But we hope that Kenyans can hold together until that time we are able to, we are able to set this whole system home. If you ask me... So. Are, we, are we ready? Yeah, 20. So it's sad about uh, what happened to Murara today with regards to the violence that was meted against him uh, with the political thugs and goons who are planned and uh, put at bombers go and attack and hurt our leader, the party leader of uh, the inject party, Murara Kibaso. Uh, he was admitted in hospital. I saw him in hospital. He was badly and severely injured. He was hurt. If you could see him, you wouldn't wish it on your it's sad and unfortunate, but uh, we'll emerge stronger, and he will emerge stronger, and the movement will emerge stronger. Other than that, I rushed to court because there was a ruling that was coming up today for Murara at 2 p.m., where the magistrate saw the charges that were preferred by the DPP to which cyber harassment were defective. So as we speak right now, Morara has been discharged. He has been let free. The bail has been returned to him. The court that has but the court has ordered that the bail be returned to him, and he is a free man, he is a free citizen. The hogwash charges that are, that are preferred against him by the DPP in Kahuku, the police officers, they have been quashed. And uh, I'm happy to tell all Kenyans that Morara has been let free and he's, he's okay. He's okay, he's doing well, and I wish him a quick recovery. And you, you say that he is badly injured, perhaps what part of his body so Morara has been injured on his head, on his neck, you could see uh, a lot of bruises and uh, there were some holes in his neck, on his back, on his leg, he's in a very, very he's in a bad state, but we're very yes. is, still, is he still admitted at the hospital? Uh, I think he's been, uh, I'm not sure, I'm, I, I'm just from court, I left him at the hospital, okay. so I'm not sure if he's out, so I'll have to confirm that. Okay. But the ruling was delivered in his absence. Do you have confirmation that this was a planned attack? I mean, you, Morara went to Bomet, went to Kericho, Ruto's home. He has never been attacked. He was in Nyanza. He has never been attacked in all those rallies that he's gone to. And uh, my friends here, Kyoti Sonko, who have been attending his lunch to us, can, can, can affirm to that. Then the one day he has gone to Bomas is the day that he was attacked. Uh, clearly, the public participation exercise was a meeting of goons uh, of ODM together with uh, uh, UDA certain UDA thugs, but uh, what I can say for a fact, those were planned wounds, it was a planned attack, because it's never happened before, because his meetings have been in Kuntu, so they could not plan uh, an in Kuntu meeting, he will just take his car, park somewhere, start addressing people, they can't, they, they can't preempt that, but when he went to Bomas, 
people started throwing chairs. I know people, specific people, and you could see the leader, uh, the member of parliament, TJ Kajwang, cheering, cheer, cheer, cheering on the beating of Moran. So uh, clearly those were ODM thugs and uh, even UDA thugs uh, who were planned or planted there to attack in the town of He was denied access. He was denied access. Other than being denied access, when he got in, he was denied the microphone. He is a Kenyan citizen. He's entitled to air his views like any other Kenyan citizen. So whatever happened to him was clearly uh, masterminded and it was planned. And uh, according to the charges that he was given uh, uh, during the you know during the court case, yes. the the cyber harassment charges were linked to a certain wealthy uh, man out there. Perhaps when you look is or is or document. Now, what you found out there, do you, do you feel maybe it was true, whatever is that man was behind the charges, or rather the, the court case? I don't, I don't think so. But the only person who can confirm is Dia Langat, and we saw some uh, statement that was issued out by uh, Dia Langat that was not responsible for the arrest of Morara. So, whatever was there was clearly, you know, it's just weaponization of the criminal judicial system, because uh, even the charges, the judge was actually very clear that the charges. The offense, there is no disclosure of the offense that Morara, that, that the offense preferred against, there is no offense under Section 27 pertaining to cyber harassment. So uh, the charges were hogwash, the charges were clearly uh, put in place, intended to silence Morara and to scare him from telling the truth. And I hope he doesn't bite into it and he goes on doing what he's doing. So uh, it's a scheme, it's a scheme, and we've seen this before, you know. Uh, anytime you see the government using the Computer Misses and Cyber Crimes Act against a certain individual or a certain person, they know there is something that they are trying to do. It's clearly a weaponization of the judicial, criminal judicial process. Okay. Yeah. And following the bombers uh, incident, are you planning to maybe to report the issue to the police? Have you reported the matter to the police? Yeah, uh, it's just that I was held up in court, but we, are, we want to actively follow up because uh, bombers have CCTV cameras. Clearly, you could see uh, the faces of some of those people who are throwing chairs, and Morara uh, will will be following up on that. We will yeah. be following up. Even the MC, the MC was shouting that Piga A, Piga A. That's actually yeah. incitement to violence. That is incitement. How is the he MP. sitting as a member of parliament? Yeah. The MP himself. So we have to follow it up. Uh, not not even Morara. I mean, uh, you see this DCI who was busy. Uh, these guys were busy running and kidnapping people. They should pick it up. They should arrest them. You know, it's a crime against a citizen of the country. There are video, there's video evidence. There is uh, there, there CCTV camera footage. So I I presume that right now they are busy, but they are busy looking into who was throwing the chairs, who was instigating the violence, and uh, we hope that those criminals will be brought to Starting with that MP member of parliament. Okay, one, but you don't have to answer if you don't feel like. Do you have a comment on Kasumel Makogre's act today of supporting the government on impeachment of Rigadega Shago? Yeah, yeah, I prefer, I prefer, I prefer, I prefer oh, um, I think I can answer that question. Um, you know, at the beginning, before we came for the exercise, the public participation, we were saying that we want both Ruto and Gashago because they, are, they were a single ticket in 2022 election and so they were all to go home. And so some of the social media influencers, when they were given that platform to air their issues, uh, we expected that they air the grievances of most of Kenyans whereby we want the entire Kenya Kwanza regime to go home. And so we expected somebody like Kasmuel to come out clear to say that both Ruto and Gashagwa, they must go home. Unfortunately, he was only touching on, on Gashagwa and um, the, the matters of uh, tribalism. But uh, there, it's better for a person to speak about tribalism than to engage in tribalism matters in exercise. When you see we have a lot of offices, yeah? if you can see those offices, people who are occupying uh, those offices, you, you will clearly notice that they are coming from probably a single uh, community. And so it's better a person who says that, uh, it's better a person who says tribalism than a person who exercises it. And so, we wish that uh, Kasmuel and any other social media influencer who could get that chance to say that both Ruto and Gashagwa must go. And uh, uh, right now, if you head over to Twitter, there is an eruption in regards to what Kasmuel did. 
Uh, many people are calling him a, a sellout, a government sellout. Do you feel so? Is it true? You know, you know at times uh, you look at uh, someone's uh, ways, the way he's moving, where he's coming from and where he's heading to. You know, when we were going to the streets, we had these members of parliament, the likes of Osoro. Osoro was one of the members of parliament who were against this movement, yeah? Yes. And so at some point, personally, I saw my good friend, Kasmil, because he's a very good friend. Uh, he was having a chit chat with Osoro, and so we had so many issues over that, because how can you go uh, laugh, speak to a person who is your inferior, and then you expect uh, to, to, to probably to condemn him? And so when we saw such uh, issues where Kasmil was uh, probably on the side of the members of parliament, we felt like whatever we were thinking in the past is exactly what uh, we, we know. And so we really condemn that and we wish that there is no any single person, any young person who was on the street that faced the tear gas to align with the members of parliament who are there to ensure that we are still suffering. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. And to add on that issue of Kasmol, Kasmol is a, is a sellout. Today in the morning, in his ex account, he posted that to, we are going to propose the impeachment of both the president and the deputy president. But upon going to the podium, Kasmol changed his tone and he was now saying impeach the deputy president. That one is a